All right, so we have a, a charge at a certain point in space, and we want to find out the electric field in Cartesian coordinates. So the way you want to approach this problem is by first finding the electric field in Cartesian coordinates, because we already have a, our units in that in that arena. We have them in the Cartesian arena. We have so, and then after that, you'd want to convert it to cylindrical. It's a pretty simple problem. So, first let's find out what our electric field is in Cartesian. And we'll do that by finding vector AP equal to... I'll do the P minus A. I'll do the immediate part there. So, P minus A would be 8 minus 4, so it'd be 4. 12 minus 3, 9. 2 minus 5, negative 3. Then we find the magnitude of AP, and that'll be square root of 4 squared plus 9 squared plus 3 squared. It's a negative 3, but it doesn't really matter. Um, what does that give me? 4 squared plus 9 squared, I believe it's 106. Okay. So, one of six. All right. So now we have our unit vector, and we just want to use our equation E equals Q over four pi epsilon naught r squared, and then we do it in the direction of the unit vector. So this gives us our magnitude. This gives us our direction. So here we go. Ready? E equals uh, 2 microcoulombs over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. This is our r right here, this 106. But since it's squared and this is square root, we can just call this 106. Because the square and the square root will cancel. Right? Um, we have our vector of 4, 9, negative 3. And we have that over square root of 1 and 6. So now we have everything done. You see how there's no uh, variables here? We can just solve this. And when you solve it, punching it into a calculator, you will get 65.9, 148.3, and negative 49.4. Okay, so now we have E in Cartesian coordinates. This is cart. Rewards. Right? So it wants us to get um, E rho, e, e phi, phi, and E z, which is essentially just Cartesian or cylindrical coordinates. So we need to switch this. So we need to, let me get a new color. So now we are converting. To fill in. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, um, we know that rho is equal to x squared plus y squared. Phi is equal to the inverse tangent of y over z. And z is simply equal to z. And if you, you can look up how that's a uh, how they actually find that, how they made these equations. It's pretty simple. Um, I don't really feel like explaining it here. It's not necessary. So let's start plugging in those numbers. All we have to do is really take these numbers and plug them in because we know this is x, this is y, that's z, right? So rho would equal square root of, make this a little longer, 65.9 squared plus 148.3 squared, and that'll give us uh, 62.9, excuse me, phi equals the inverse tangent of, again, just y over x, 148.3 over 65.9. Uh, this would be, uh, shoot, didn't I write this down somewhere? Oh, I did. Yeah, it's right here. 
148.3. And then z equals z. So z is simply negative 49.4. So now it's basically our whole problem. Oh, whoops, zoomed in. I have to scroll down. So e would then be equal to uh, 162.29, 148.3, and negative 49.4. And this gives us our problem because this is e of rho, this is e of phi, and this is e of z. That's essentially what it's asking for. I did it in a bit of a different form, but it's, you know, it's the same thing. And one thing to note is that I, the book has a different um, answer here. It's got a really wonky answer, and I'm I'm pretty certain. I'm like 99% sure I'm doing this right. So, um, yeah, you know, take that as you will. But I'm pretty sure I got this right, because really it's, it's a simple freaking problem. All you're doing is getting E and converting it to cylindrical. It's really not that crazy, but for some reason... Um, the book did some really weird way, and it got a different result, and I'm, I'm almost certain this is the right way to do it. So, you know, there you go. Thanks. See you next time. Bye.